Have you ever sat with anybody at the end of their life and you've listened to them as they've talked to you about all of the regrets, the regrets of working too much or drinking too much or not forgiving a certain person or not looking after their health or there are so many different things and parts of our lives that people have re regret about. You know, go go to a retirement place. Go go to a place with people who perhaps are getting towards the end of their life. Often they've got stillness, quietness, and life has slowed down because their bodies have relaxed, their thinking is relaxed, and they've got time to think. And when you have time to think, you have time to feel. And when you have time to feel, if it's coming from deep inside of yourself, you get clarity. You get clarity of where you are, where you've been, and perhaps where you'd like to go. However, if you are in your latter years, you actually don't have a, have a lot of time left. So today's live is the top seven regrets. I've listed a few, there are many more, you know, not taking risks, not expressing emotions, not putting the time and energy that is needed in a relationship. But what I'm going to talk to you about today is the three ingredients that are re required to have no regrets. One, how do you let go of expectations of others? Or put differently, how do you let go of being the pleaser? How do you create what is really important, belonging, support, and love? Like how do you create those genuine connections? And lastly, pursue what truly matters to you. Not your partner, not your mother, not your children, but what truly matters for you coming from courage and change. So let's dive in. How do you stop trying to please others? So let's take a step back. This isn't something that you just woke up with. When we please others, it's a conditioning, it's a patterning, it's a way of behavior. And until you begin to slow down, until you begin to become conscious of what you're doing, you'll continue to do it. It's, it's, so crucial that you please others because then you don't need to feel uncomfortable. You don't need to feel rejection. You don't need to look at yourself. When you're pleasing others, it's all outside of yourself. Pleasing others is, it really is a way to not really look at yourself. And ultimately, if you want to not have regrets, you got to start recognizing when you are pleasing others. Look, and I'm being sort of quite general, but let's bring it back to uh, you're in a relationship and you're constantly trying to please your partner and trying to make your partner happy. Look, I have gone on and on and on about this one in Facebook Lives, on my podcast, uh, on YouTube, that it isn't your job to make your partner happy. And ultimately, if you want to have uh, peace inside, if you want to feel happy, and if you want to have no regrets, it's so important to begin noticing when you are pleasing others. Sometimes it takes a tragedy. Sometimes it takes a relationship breakup. Sometimes it takes a health scare for you to go, oh, wow, this is the behavior I'm doing. I'm trying to please you. You're still not freaking happy. Maybe it's time for me to please myself. And it's the, the first thing is an awareness. It's being aware that you're doing it. Uh, and that's the first place to start. So I want to move on from being a pleaser because there's a lot in that. The second I want to talk to is how do you prioritize genuine connection for belonging, support, and love? Genuine connection. That's authentic connection. Connection that comes from 
the true you, the real you, not the you that you've created to be loved. And genuine connection, you, you can feel it in your body. You know, your, your head, your heart, your gut, you're aligned to that. Genuine connection, you can tell if it's genuine connection, can't you? Well, well I believe you can. It's, it's you, you feel a vibration in your body, it's the way you look at the person, it's the way you connect. You know, it's that genuine connection. I'm just looking at the clock behind me. I need to move around so I'm not seeing it. Anyway, um, genuine connection. You know, when you get to the end of your life, you want to know that you've maxed it out, that you've had authentic, real, genuine connections. And the only way you can do that is by turning up authentically, without masks, without being walled, without, when I say walled, having a wall of concrete in front of you, uh, and just being happy in your own skin. That is how you create a genuine connection. The last place I want to talk to is pursue what truly matters from courage um, and embracing change. How do you work out what truly matters to you? What do you work out? Like, how do you work out what is important to you? And how you do that is the quality of questions you ask yourself. And it's, it's being able to keep digging down about what, what is important. What do I really want? And being able to have a vision. Because if you, if you can embody it, if you can feel it, you've got much more of a chance of actually obtaining it. And to be able to go for your vision, you do need a few tablespoons of courage and being able to embrace change. And, you know, if I go back to the top seven uh, regrets and not pursuing your vision or going for your purpose or what is important for you, that is a regret. You don't want to get to the end of your life, like when you're perhaps in your 90s, and I wish I'd done this, or I wish I'd done that. It's all about dropping inside and getting really, really clear uh, about what it is that you want for your life, because nobody is going to do it for you. You are the only one who can do it for yourself. So the seven regrets, it can create a lot of sadness and a lot of despair. However, get very clear on what it is you want because if you can name what you want, it is, it's a decision and then it's putting in the steps to be able to begin doing that. But I'm really big on uh, being able to manifest or when I say manifest, know what your vision is and actually embody it. Feel it in your body so that you know you've already got it. And then you just got to do the steps to get it. And if, if roadblocks get in the way, well, it doesn't matter because you know you're going to get it and you'll do it anyway. Uh, but it's, it's having the courage to really back yourself. So you don't want to get to the end of your life and have regrets. In fact, you don't even want to get to the end of this year and have regrets because you haven't gone for what you truly, truly want. Uh, so yeah, food for thought, isn't it? Really um, sit in what do I want? And you can look at all the different areas uh, of your life, whether it be professionally or personally, and, and start really dropping into what do I really want? What am I willing to do to get that? And is there a price too high to get that? And then have a vision of what that looks like. Uh, because if you can feel it, embody it, you will go for it. And then it's setting your goals around that. Anyway, I'm going to love you and leave you. You have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.